Hello, my name is Maricela Bravo, and today I'm going to present the paper titled Automated Ontology Population and Enrichment of Scientific Publications. I come from the Universidad Autónoma Metropolitana, which is located in Mexico City. Thank you very much. Well, universities and research centers normally count with highly specialized researchers who conduce scientific experiments, produce data, information, statistics, and publish their scientific results in reports, journals, books, among others. But what is the value of expertise on talent accumulated by scientific assistants, professors, researchers, and students, this is a very important issue for every institution. Therefore, the acquisition, organization, and processing of scientific publications is very important. The motivation of this research is to investigate on the advantages of using ontologies to represent and manage large volumes of scientific publication data, implement novel methods for data acquisition representation and enrichment by using ontologies, and to enable the execution of logical inferences to discover possible scientific collaboration and common research topics, and also to discover or search for the research topics of interest. The architecture of this approach consists of a first uh, step The architecture of this approach consists of first the data extraction from publication data collections and then a second module to manage scientific publications by using an ontology. Here, we need first to count with an ontology model to represent scientific publications. Also, an ontology management application interface which consists and supports ontology population, ontology enrichment, and ontology reasoning. But where are we going to collect information about publications? There are different sources of information available on internet and we can use them freely. Some of them and some others are not free. First of all, there is the DBLP which is a computer science bibliography which indexes more than 40,000 journal volumes and more than 39,000 conference and workshop proceedings. Also, there is the Arnet Miner, which provides publication data collections. Arnet Miner is a project which implements methods that exploit the structure of social networks to discover academic collaborative relationships. Google Scholar is a web search engine that provides access to abstracts of articles that have cited the article being viewed. It provides a citation indexing. Also, Scopus is a database of publications provided by Elsevier record citation and bibliographic abstracts with linked data about papers published in reference journals, proceedings of conference, and scientific book charters. And Sightseer is the public search engine and digital library for scientific and academic papers uh, in the fields of computer and information science. Of course, there are many other sources of information that could be used but in this case, in particular, we're going to use Arnet Miner because Arnet Miner offers structured text files that allows to count with information about authors, publications, and citations. 
Well, next I'm going to explain how do we build the ontology, how do we construct this ontology fully automatically. First, as I mentioned before, we are using the Arnett Miner paper data collection, which is a data file consisting of information with paper titles, authors, affiliation, year of publication, publication venue, and the ID of the reference of this paper. These references are related with the same index, which is the ID of each paper in this Arnett Miner collection. And also, we can get the abstract of every publication. Well, the publication ontology population consists of extracting this information from the text files from Arnett Miner with an input data parser and then using an ontology population API, we construct automatically a publication ontology. Here we can see the class diagram of the, of the ontology population, which has some classes, uh, for instance, the paper class, which represents the information contained in the Arnett Miner paper file. Also, we have the author class, which represents the information contained in the Arnett Miner author file. We have this paper extraction and also the paper ontology manage, manager, which automatically builds and populates an ontology which has this representation. We have as the core concept of this ontology, the publication, the author, and the research topic. From this publication, we extract the information from the Arlet Miner paper and we obtain the title, the abstract, the venue, and the year of publication. And also, for the author and research topic, we extract information also from these data sources. Then, the ontology enrichment is the next step that we want to execute with our, our ontology. There are two approaches with ontology enrichment, an internal, internal enrichment and an external enrichment. The internal enrichment consists of the entire ontology model together with axioms and rules, rules of inference, and a reasoning and inference engine, which is responsible of doing the enrichment process based on the axioms and rules defined into the ontology. Then this model, this kind of internal enrichment, is all contained into the ontology. There is another kind of enrichment, which is an external enrichment that consists of using an ontology and extracting the information from the ontology by means of an application that reads and loads ontology entities, and then by using machine learning algorithms, executing machine learning algorithms and discovering new information that wasn't explicitly stated into the ontology, then we find new information. And once this new information is uh, obtained, we write back into the ontology the new information obtained. And this process is considered an external enrichment. The advantage of using an external enrichment is that we can implement different type of machine learning algorithms. In particular, in this case, we are using this external enrichment approach, and we are using it to discover semantic similarities 
Between Publications and the ACM Taxonomy. And for that reason, we are using the ontology that was already built on the previous steps of this process, and we included the AC, ACM taxonomy, which is the taxonomy of computer-related uh, uh, topics, and together with these two uh, ontologies, we randomly select a sample of 10 research topics and also we randomly select a sample of 10 publication titles. Then for each topic with each title, we calculate the following semantic similarities. We have selected these semantic similarities, but we could use any collection or any type of semantic similarity or even syntactic similarities. But for now, we're just using these semantic similarities, which are the Gu Palmer, Jean Conrad, Lee Koch, Lin, Pat, Resnick. And then the, the reason to do this is because we need to find which is the best semantic similarity to use because we have a large amount of publications and also a very large amount of research topics. Therefore, the discovery of these correlations is very difficult. Then we have to execute only the best performance similarity measures. Once we have done this with these uh, samples, we calculate the mean of all similarity measures and filter results with a mean higher than a 0.4, 0 0.4. And then we generate, as a result, uh, an Excel file, which is the output file of this process. Well, in order to evaluate the results obtained by this uh, procedure, we need to do an exploratory statistical analysis of the similarity measures. As you can see in this table, we have the Gu Palmer, Jean Conrad, Lea Koch, Lin, Pat, and Resnick results with 10 samples and the, uh, and the average of each, each similarity measure is shown in this table. In the rest of the table, we can see the mean of all similarity measures, the variance, the standard deviation, the interval, and of course, the relative error. The best performance similarity measures regarding the relative error are the Good Palmer and the Lea Koch similarity measures. As we can see in this uh, last row of the table, we can see that the less relative error, the best similarity measure performance. Another evaluation that we conducted with these similarity measures is the precision and recall of similarity. Again, we are using all the similarity measures results and we calculate the precision, the recall, and the F1 measure. These are very important evaluation criteria for the similarity measures. Then, as we are using two different approaches for the similarity measures evaluation, we need to do an overall evaluation. And the overall evaluation involves the exploratory statistical analysis and the precision and recall by the F1 measure. Then here we are putting all of them, the results of all of them, and the overall evaluation will help us to decide 
the, the best similarity measure that we can find here is the Gu Palmer. Well, this paper is work in progress and we are reporting an approach to automatically populate an ontology of scientific publications. And also, we are working towards the definition of an enrichment approach based on a set of similarity measures. This set of similarity measures will help us to execute clustering or classification algorithms in order to fully enrich and very uh, uh, with good evaluation results to enrich the ontology. We have evaluated this set of semantic similarity measures and we have decided that the most appropriate measure among the ones that were selected for evaluation is, is possible to decide by means of two evaluation, a, st a statistical analysis and also an analysis of the precision of the measure. This helps us to reduce the number of calculations that computation required and also we reduce this by using only samples to determine the level of confidence about each of the measures. Thank you very much. If you have any question, please you can contact me or you can ask now. Thank you very much.